welcome back everybody so i already had a sneak peek in this box kind of went through what's in here but we need to bring you all up to speed on what is going on it's been a long time since we've done really anything with the d4 project but there's been several things going on behind the scenes so let's get you caught up well i got these parts back from sandblasting and they are pretty gnarly inside Unfortunately, this thing just sat for too long. Uh, flanges here are going to need some truing up. But while this is still in the raw, I want to go ahead and get this clip tall coating put in here. Uh, two reasons we're doing this. One is just a barrier for any leaking. If this casting has any porous holes that have been exposed, this will help mitigate that. Second reason is these caterpillars always run cold. You really have to work them to try and get any heat into the diesel. This will just be one more place where heat can't escape. It will have to go out through the core itself. I don't really think it's going to make much of a difference, but I would like to seal this off anyway, so let's get to it. By far the hardest to get to areas are going to be back in here where it actually goes behind. Um, I don't have like a bent brush to get in there. So what I'm gonna do is kind of lay it on heavy and then I can move this whole piece back and forth and kind of rock that excess into them cavities there. And we'll probably do just a couple coats in here just to make sure we get enough on there. We'll start out and just kind of get some up here, kind of see how it wants to lay out. See how it kind of just evens out a lot of them imperfections. It really likes to fill in all of them divots. But you guys don't need to see here, sit here and watch me run a paintbrush. So I'll bring you back when we're done. So real quick, you can see I kind of have it pooled up in there and there. Notice it's covering everything. You come down here, that's what you can reach with a brush. So I will do the same thing down here, pull that in there, rock it back and forth, and then the excess can all run out of that hole there. And <clears throat> we'll just rock it back and forth with a rag underneath that hole to catch the excess. So with the top tank and the bottom tank and Gliptol, don't worry about this excess, we'll clean all that off when we mill these. I need to go through and replace the old straps. So looking at these old hold down strips, you can see they have seen better days. They're no longer flat and very, very corroded. So we're gonna run some 304 stainless ones. So we'll get these transferred over. So with them clamped in place, we're gonna mark this a little bit long. I'll trim that down once we actually start the assembly. And I'm gonna go through and center punch every one of these holes with a transfer punch. With all my holes laid out here, I went ahead and just did a test punch on this excess scrap here. And I didn't mind how it did it. I was worried about punching through stainless if it wanted to tear out on the back real bad. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to punch it 5 16 and then we'll take it full width to a 3 8 just with a drill. So let's go punch these out.
with the straps done until I start mocking up the sides and getting them fit more precise, I decided to move my attention to one other piece. Another project that needs to be done for the front radiator is this shaft for barring over the diesel engine. As you can see, we are rusted into this flange here. What I ended up doing was cutting this shaft. And now I want to take this to the lathe and turn out this shaft, get rid of it completely, and save this casting. And we will install a new shaft with new pins and delete the rest. Well, here's a good example of why you don't throw your carbide end mills away even when their teeth are chipped. They are still perfectly good enough to typically just drill a hole down into a shaft or remove a broken bolt or in this case this is a hardened pin. I tried drilling it with just a standard drill bit and it took the the sharpness right off the flutes. It, it, it dulled it right away but put an a old broken end mill in there and it powered right through took all that out and turned it all to chips. So now I can come in there with a carbide boring bar even though these are hardened, open this up and then hopefully I can just wiggle what's left of those out of there. Whereas currently they are still rusted in there pretty tight. Just a quick look down in that bore you can see we're well past the depth of that pin. And you won't do that with high speed steel. I don't know what these pins are as far as hardness but you will, you'll just dull your drill bits. So let's get the rest of it out of there. They're starting to move, so let's get them out of there. And there we go, just like that, we cut that pin in half. We got that bore going there. Now I can come back in and keep boring this shaft out. I don't care about any of that, I just want this housing without ruining it. What you doing, Finny? All right. So the roto brooch took it down to that, just that little sleeve, just like the engine guys do. We're just going to try and collapse that in on itself and get it knocked out of there. Well, guys, I'm saving you the hassle of watching me chip this out piece by piece. Um, I think the engine guys have it a lot easier because this inner bore is not rusty when they're taking their sleeves out. Typically, that's a clean surface yet as this is not it really wants to hold on there so i'm going to keep whittling it away and we'll bring you back and there it is it took a lot more than i thought it was going to i was thinking i could just collapse one side in but it didn't work that way because all this rust all the way around was holding this thing in so now i need to clean that bore out start getting a new shaft made and that brings us to what's in the box. So right there, it's a new hardened pin. Here's the other side. It's a little bit longer. New main shaft, cut to length. New shim washers. It's the closest thing I could find in, in dimension to this washer here that's held in there by this cotter pin. It's folded over. And then new springs. We'll have to cut these down and make these fit. In the meantime, I'm going to box these up. 
I'm waiting on a reamer to press fit these pins in. So unfortunately that'll have to be in the next video. But I want to get the sides on and get these trimmed down before I start milling these surfaces. Once all that is done, this needs to go and get a core put in it. So I want these in place to dimension. Um, it should not change at all when we take a little bit of material off of here. And we're not going to take much. You're probably talking 25, 30 thousandths at most. Shouldn't make a difference. With the side tank in place, it's time to upset the bolt connoisseurs and put in brand new stainless steel bolts because that's not what came out of there. And there it is, guys. I got the bottom strips fitting in there pretty well. Now I need to go through and do the tops. But I wanted to get everyone caught up. We'll worry about this front crank piece when that reamer comes in. I want to thank everyone for sticking around and for watching. And we'll catch you on the next one.